I will talk about uh, chromical convexity. And many of us uh, who, who are here uh, last week uh, have seen lo a lot about chromical convexity in the meta convexity bookend, but let me uh, very quickly define some uh, uh, basic notions. So uh, for string X, we, we, we want to load the uh, shortest encoding from which we can recover X. And the chromical of capacity of X is the minimum length of a string N, which we will call it a program, such that if you run the universal tuning machine on N, we get back X. And the universal tuning machine is fixed in advance. And there's slow restriction on how long the program will run. So we can define a time bound version of comic of capacity. And uh, first we fix uh, time bound T. And then the T time bounded comic of capacity is the minimum length of a, of a string of a program that can recover X within T steps. And in this talk, uh, and uh, this uh, time bounded comic of capacity is denoted as K superscript T. And in this talk, I would just say KT to mean K superscript T. And the reason that I don't use K poly is because in some application mentioned later, the T doesn't have to be a uh, polynomial. And recently there have been many exciting application of time bounded combo of capacity. Here I just list some of them in uh, average case capacity, uh, cryptography and learning. And uh, Time bound combo capacity is very useful, but there seem to be uh, some issues when we use KT as the notion of time bound combo of capacity in certain contexts. And one is that uh, KT doesn't seem to be very applicable in the randomized setting. And the second is that we don't have good understanding of the fundamental properties of combo of capacity for KT. And I will talk more about this later. But let me just say that uh, to address these uh, issues, my research like, with my collaborators is about um, incorporating randomness into Kolmogorov complexity and try to make it more useful. And the notion that we will focus on is called uh, probabilistic time bounded Kolmogorov complexity, which was introduced in a joint work with uh, Haley Goldberg. Valentin Gabanes and uh, Igor Oliveira. And I have written down the technical and, and, we, and we call it PKT. And I've written down the formal definition here, but understanding this definition is not so important for this talk. And basically, um, uh, we can think of it as if a string X has small probabilistic combo of complexity, then it means it has a short encoding given a random string. Now let me uh, show you some application of PKT and we will see how it can be used to address the issues that I uh, mentioned for KT. And a couple of years ago, um, Shuji Hiaha had this uh, great results about um, uh, in average case complexity. And he showed that if MP can be efficiently solved on average by deterministic algorithms, then we can solve UP in deterministic time two to the n divided by log n in the worst case. And in his uh, later work with uh, Mikito Larashima, from the same assumption, they show that uh, we can learn small circuits on any uh, unknown P poly sampleable distributions. I know that uh, neither of these uh, results says anything about Kolmogorov complexity. But the proofs uh, heavily rely on um, uh, uh, time bounded combo of complexity and more specifically KT. And in both cases, uh, we need to assume that MP can be uh, solved uh, on average by deterministic algorithms. And if we just assume that MP can be solved by a randomized algorithm, the proof no longer work. And the reason is that this. Uh, result, this, the proofs are long black box. If we just replace an average, a deterministic average algorithm by a, a randomized uh, average case algorithm, then we cannot just use as a black box and get the same thing. So the question here is whether we can uh, extend it to 
the randomized setting. There are good reasons to consider a randomized average case capacity and not just the deterministic one, but I will not get into the details. And in the same paper where we introduced the notion of PKT, we also use uh, this notion to extend the previous result uh, to the randomized setting. So we show that if MP can be efficiently solved on average by a randomized algorithm, then we can still get a faster algorithm, uh, a faster randomized algorithm that solves uh, UP. And we, get, we also get exactly this, uh, the, the exact same learning consequence as in previous work. Okay, uh, next I will, uh, I'm going to uh, uh, talk about some, some of the very important uh, properties of Kolmogorov of complexity. And one such property is called the uh, coding theorem. So the coding theorem for time bounded Kolmogorov of complexity says that if you have um, computable distribution D that samples X with probability D of X, then the Kolmogorov of complexity of X is at most log one over D of X. And the proof of the coding theorem crucially rides on the time unbounded feature of Kolmogorov complexity. So the question here is whether, we, whether there's a coding theorem for time bounded Kolmogorov complexity, say uh, K poly. Say we want to say, show that uh, there's, if, uh, if, there, if we have uh, efficiently sampleable distribution D that samples X with probability of X, can we say that the K poly complexity of X is at most log one over D of X? And in fact, Antunes and Fort Lau show that uh, this is true if we assume a strong deep randomization assumption, but this result is conditional. And in a joint work with uh, Igor Oliveira and Marius Zeman, we get an unconditional coding theorem for PK poly. So if there's an efficient sample distribution D that samples X with probability of X, then we can say that the PK poly complexity of X is at most log one over uh, D of X. And we can also show a converse. So um, the efficient sampleability of a string uh, corresponds exactly to its PK poly capacity. Yeah. And okay, another important property in Kolmogorov capacity is uh, called symmetry of information. So uh, we know that for a string X and Y, the Kolmogorov capacity of X and Y is roughly at most the Kolmogorov complexity of X plus the Kolmogorov complexity of Y given X. And this is just because if we want to get a program that prints X and Y, then we can first use the program that prints X and then use the program that prints Y given X. And symmetry of information for time unbounded Kolmogorov complexity basically says that this inequality is tied in the sense that um, K of X and Y is at least k of x plus k of y given x minus some small term. And the reason why we call the symmetry of information is because from the um, two uh, inequality, we can get something uh, that's analogous to what's called uh, symmetry of information in Shannon's information theory. And again, the question here is uh, does symmetry of information hold in the time bounded setting, say uh, for KT. And unlike the coding theorem, uh, we know that symmetry information is unlikely to hold uh, for KT. And that's because uh, we know that uh, if one way function is X, then symmetry of information for KT fails. And uh, intuitively, if we are if we have a one-way function f, or let's say if we have a one-way permutation, then from x, we can compute f of x efficiently. But if we are just given f of x, we cannot get back x uh, efficiently. So there's an asymmetry of information between these two strings if we take uh, into account the time. And Longgrad and Watalabe um, formally connect the, uh, the existence of one-way function to the failure of uh, symmetry information for kt but the results only show um, uh, one directions. And since then has been a, okay, since then has been an open question 
uh, whether we can get some event only if statement between one way functions and symmetry of information. And in uh, upcoming work with uh, Shishi Hihara, Rahul Ilango, um, Nikito Larashima, and Igor Oliveira, we show that one way function exists if and only if some average case version of symmetry information for PKT does not hold. So again, PKT seems to be the uh, right notion to connect the one-way function and symmetry of information. And in the same paper, we have um, we also use um, other properties of uh, PKT to characterize uh, more complex D assumptions, such as uh, P log equals to MP or MP star on uh, average. And there will be a talk on this in the upcoming workshop of the Metacompacity program. Any questions? Okay, I'll ask a sort of naive question. So your new condition on equivalence of one-way functions, how does it relate to the average case hardness of, of CKT or something? Is it in the same spirit? Uh, you mean the last one? Yeah, um, uh, because there are some other theorems like this, right? Like the yeah. new pass theorem and yeah. so on. Yeah, first of all, yeah, it's uh, unconditional. So the equivalence is unconditional. And compared to new pass, new pass says that uh, one-way function exists if like KT is, some, uh, KT is hard on average. And in this case, we are not considering like the hardest of computing some problem. We consider whether the properties of PKT holds, whether properties of time body complexity holds. And so in some sense, it's like different. Are you so the question is what's the what's the construction the arrow going the other way so if you assume the symmetry fails then how do you is there a simple way to describe the one way function construct maybe you can take it offline yeah the yeah I'll be, I'll take so, it all right so let's uh, take a coffee break now and we'll resume at 11:30 uh, and let's thank all the speakers in the session